how is this crisis different than 98? How is this crisis different than 2008? Well, compared to 2008, right now, we don't have the credit risk yet. We're not in a recession, and the losses that occurred seem to be related to market risk. A number of financial institutions did not realize that with rising interest rates, the price of bonds would fall. And last year, uh, U.S. banks alone have something like $620 billion of unrealized losses on their securities with a capital of about $2.2 mm -hmm. So the average loss is about 28%, will reduce significantly their capital ratio, the tier one ratio. And for some banks, actually, the numbers, like uh, uh, Silicon Valley Bank, of course, the number was 100%, but there are still other regional banks where right. they had to realize losses, there'll be 50% of their current capital. No, so it's about I want to go back to your Italian economics, your public service to President uh, Clinton, where you were expert on the regulatory framework. Switzerland is a devolved federal government with the cantons with great strength. What is your knowledge of Swiss regulators right now? How removed are they from the Credit Suisse crisis? Or they, can they be active today to help their beleaguered bank? Well, uh, they can be active today, even if they have a system that is uh, delegated. However, the problem is that Credit Suisse, by some standards, might be too big to fail, but also too big to be saved. It's not clear that, unlike the United States, the federal system has enough resources to engineer a bailout. And uh, what they need, certainly, is more capital. And the question is whether they're going to get that capital or not. Otherwise, bad things can happen. Well, bad things are happening this morning. Nouria, I'd love your take on yeah. this. There might be some people waking up this morning, looking at what's happening with Credit Suisse, perhaps, perhaps based here in the United States, and thinking, what does this mean for me? Why is this important? Could you explain to those people, Nouria, just how important Credit Suisse might be to the financial system? Well, it's important because SVP was only about $150 billion of assets, while in the case of Credit Suisse, we're speaking about at least a 700 billion. So anything will happen to Credit Suisse will be of systemic effect for not just the European financial system, but also for the global financial system. So if, uh, if Silicon Valley Bank create a ripple effects in global financial market, something bad happening to Credit Suisse will be an order of magnitude more severe, something more like a Lehman moment. A lot of people are, are talking about the implications of this on monetary policy. And Torsten Slock earlier said, when the facts change, his view changes from no landing to a hard landing. He sees uh, perhaps the end of a rate hiking cycle, as does the market, including 100 basis points of cuts in the next year. Nouriel, do you agree with this assessment? Have the facts changed where suddenly rate hikes are out of the picture and you see that the inflation story will get solved by a, a crisis elsewhere? Uh, I don't think so. I think that the dilemma for central bank has gotten even worse because the latest economic data for inflation in the Eurozone or the U.S. suggests that inflation is still too high, is falling, but is not falling as fast as the Fed or ECB want it to be. So based on what's the economy doing right now, we need to hike and hike much more. The Fed should go at least closer to 6%. The ECB should bring the depot rate to at least 4%. The problem right now, we're facing a situation of financial instability, and financial instability would suggest to stop hiking, maybe even cutting rates, maybe even resuming quantitative easing. And what the Fed has done is backdoor quantitative easing. But if you do that, you have a risk of the anchoring of inflation, inflation expectation. That trade-off existed even before. Raising rates would have led to stresses in financial market, like last year, where bond yields uh, went much higher, credit spread widened. That stress is becoming more severe today because now we have systemic financial problems, but we are also in a situation inflation is still way too high. And the idea that this financial stress is going to cause inflation to drop is not yet in the economic data. So there is a dilemma for central banks. Although a lot of people are saying that they see credit conditions tightening. We heard earlier from Larry Fink of BlackRock saying that he sees a slow rolling crisis that's going to move from the banking system to private credit, to private equity. How does your view kind of tie into this, the sort of inherent credit tightening that we see across a whole host of assets? Certainly there's going to be a tightening of financial conditions at least in terms of credit spreads. 
bond yields are falling, but on the short and long end, that's an easing of financial condition that eventually might lead to an economic slowdown. But the reality is inflation today is way too high and it's going to remain too high because the forces are leading to high inflation, like, for example, very tight labor market are still with us. And therefore, that's going to be a cause of persistent inflation. And the idea that eventually the tightening of financial conditions is going to cause a slowdown of the economy and a weakening of inflation is not yet in the data. So there is a real contradiction between achieving economic stability and lower inflation and maintaining financial stability today. What a conflict. What a conflict. Nuri, I've got 45 seconds left. I wanted to give the opportunity to try and answer this. Banks found out that a risk was where they thought the safety was. Noria, where's the safety now? Well, the safety is not in long-term treasuries. I've been writing for it for over a year. You know, if average inflation were to be, say, 5%, 10-year treasury eventually have to be 7%. Today, they're around 35 Last year, you lost 20% on your safe bonds, more than you lost on your S&P, because yield went from 1 towards 3 if they go from three and a half to seven over the medium term, there'll be further bloodbath on $20 trillion of long duration risk assets. The solution is going to be short term treasury, tips, gold, precious metals and other hedges against inflation. That's where you have to go. And investors only now have started to realize it, that that's where you have to do.